Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and I want to show you how to find critical Z values. There are a lot of instances where we need to find a Z value so that the area either to the left or the right of it is a particular value or a particular quantity of data. We refer to these as critical values of Z, often referred to as Z alpha, where we're simply giving the tail of the curve a name and its name is alpha. So what if I wanted the shaded area of this curve to represent 5% of the data? That would give me 5% here, and I know that gives me 95% here. So in this case, we would refer to that as alpha 0.05. What I'm looking for is a critical Z value that splits this curve so that 5% of the data is to the right of that Z and the other 95 is to the left. Because the way the normal cumulative distribution table looks and works, we're going to actually look up, see if we can find the Z value associated with 95%. So we're going to use our table backwards. Instead of looking at the columns and the rows, we're going to come in and we're going to start examining these quantities of data until we can find that 95%. So when I look for my 95%, I come down here to 1.6 and I have 94.9495 and I come over here and I've got 9505. So they're exactly 0 .0005 away from what I'm looking for. So in this case, when they're exactly the same distance apart, I'm going to come up and I'm going to take my two Z scores. I'm going to take 1.64 and 1.65 and I'm going to take the average giving me a critical Z value of 1.645. The only time we're going to average two z-scores like that is when we end up with two quantities of data that are equidistant or the same distance from our target value. So now I want to find a z-critical that is associated with having 1% of my data down here in this lower curve. So I want 0.01 here. Again, we can let that represent alpha. And because we have a value to the left of the mean, we automatically know that our z is going to be a negative z. And we also know that we're moving the same direction as our cumulative table. So the area we're going to look up in the table this time is going to be the 0.01. Because remember, we're moving the same direction as our table which is to the left. So I'm looking for 1% and I find it right here, or as close as I'm going to get, 0 0.0099. And I see that's a Z of negative 2.33. So the critical Z value associated with 1% of the data in the tail, left tail of the curve is going to be a negative 2.33. Well, what if I wanted the shaded areas in this curve to represent a total of 5%? Well, because our curve is symmetrical, we know that 5% is split in two. And so I now, I know that I've got 2.5% in my upper tail, and I've got 2.5% in my lower tail. And that's going to strand the other 95% in the middle. In the case of looking for both tails. I know up here I'm going to have a positive Z. Down here I'm going to have a negative Z. And they're literally going to be mirror images one of one another because we have symmetry with normal distribution. So back to my table I go and I'm looking for 2.5%. So on the left I see that's a Z of negative 1.9% if I went way off my screen, that would be 6. So I know if I have a negative 1.96 on the left, that its counterpart is going to be the positive 1.96 on the right. Look at your curve. Determine the area that you're looking for. Use that normal distribution table from the inside out. 
looking for your quantity of data and working out to the associated z-score and you should be good to go. As always, I hope you found this useful and thanks so much for watching.